Hey, it's Jake. We're in the mushroom shop. Today I wanted to show you the technique I use growing cordyceps in pie tins. The reason why I came up with this is I wanted something that is, is easy to inoculate and contamination free as mason jars while still allowing you surface area and time efficiency is growing in bins or tubs. Um, so everything I'm going to go over um, I'm going to go over the substrate recipe, super simple, how long to cook, the inoculation method, fruiting, incubation, um, also preparing the liquid culture. So I'm just going to show you a video of me going through the whole process and talk about exactly what I'm doing as I go along. The first thing you want to do in this process is get your liquid culture expanded. So you purchase a syringe of fresh cordyceps liquid culture, either from Appalachian Gold fungi or terrestrial fungi. You're gonna to wanna to have your liquid culture jar uh, pre-sterilized and ready to go. So the day that you get your culture syringe in the mail, you can immediately inoculate it and begin <clears throat> expanding the liquid culture. Culture senesce really quickly, so the key is with getting good yields on cordyceps and vigorous growth is to always having the mycelium growing and expanding. Um, I'm gonna make a quick video soon on how I make my liquid culture, um, go into like the recipes and uh, how I make the lids, but you can use just about any method and both Appalachian Gold and Terrestrial Fungi have um, recipes for making liquid culture for cordyceps. It should take about a week for these to be fully colonized once you first inoculate them. So here's how I prepare the substrate. You have one kilo or 1,000 grams of rice. If you live in the U.S. it might be useful to know that it's about two pounds four ounces. Um, you have 50 grams of spirulina. Now this spirulina is really low quality. I literally got the cheapest kind I could find. Um, I learned that that's not, um, that there is a difference if you buy cheap stuff. Um, you'll need more spirulina if it's a lower quality. If you buy really nice organic uh, spirulina, um, you could use maybe 20% less. Um, so this is 50 grams of spirulina, add it right into the rice, and uh, then you just have plain water. Um, I just use tap water. Um, it's 1,380 milliliters, um, so about 1.4 liters. And I'm just gonna be cooking this in this really cheap rice cooker. Um, it's nice to use a rice cooker because it's um, it doesn't burn the rice quite as often. And you can also prepare the substrate anywhere. It doesn't have to be uh, your kitchen. And so as this starts boiling, I'm going to stir it periodically. And once it turns itself off, I know that the substrate will be cooked and ready to be placed in pie tins. Okay, so the substrate is done cooking now. Uh, I'm gonna remove the lid. By the way, keep the lid on most of the time it's cooking and just take it off when you're stirring. Um, but it's stirred up really well now. This is enough substrate for three pie tins. So each pie tin gets um, 720 grams uh, or one pound 10 ounces of the cooked substrate. The pie tins that I'm using are 11 inches in diameter and they're about one and a half inches deep. Um, I thought pie tins were a nice vessel to use because they're cheap, they're only about a dollar a piece. They're lightweight and they're reusable. Um, and of course the shape fits well in the pressure cooker. 
So when you're packing in the spirulina rice into these pie tins, don't be afraid to really press it down flat. The cordyceps has no issue with um, colonizing super dense substrates. It doesn't need to be light and airy or anything. I really pack it down flat and even as possible. And then the next step, I place these pizza stacks right in the middle. And so you can stack these up high in the pressure cooker and the, the bag that you place this whole tin inside of, the bag won't rest on the um, rice as much and stick to the rice. Um, the bottom ones in the pressure cooker don't always stand up to the weight and they might buckle once it gets really hot in there but by then they will have done their job. There won't be as bad as an issue anyways. The bag that I'm going to be placing the pie tins in is a 3T unicorn bag. It's the 0.2 micron filter. I folded the top gussets really nicely and then tucked them underneath and it will go into the pressure cooker just like that. Now I have the pressure cooker loaded up with pie tins. Um, you can fit about six of them in here, which works out pretty well because it's two batches of the rice cooker. So now that I have them all loaded up, I'm going to pressure cook them at 15 PSI for 90 minutes. And then I'm going to let them cool in front of my flow hood overnight and I'll inoculate them tomorrow. Okay, so it's um, morning now. I uh, let the pressure cooker uh, cool in front of the flow hood overnight, uh, right behind me there. Um, what I'm going to do is take out each of the pie tins. Um, I'm going to open up the bags a little bit um, so there's um, sort of an air gap between the top of the bag and the top of the substrate and then I'm going to seal them with my heat sealer. I crack the seal on the front of the bag here, uh, just pull apart the gussets, and then I just tug up on the corners of the bag, and uh, the bag will fill up with air <clears throat> and allow you some space in the bag. All right, so I have all the bags sealed and inflated with air. Um, next, I'm going to inject them with the liquid culture. Um, I was just stirring this up on the stir plate, so it should be chopped up nicely. Um, a tip that I have for you is if you use uh, syringe filters for your liquid culture, is cover them with a piece of foil, and that'll prevent um, any of the isopropyl from going inside of the syringe fil filter. For each of these pie tins, I'm going to add 100 milliliters of liquid culture. For these ones, I did only 60 milliliters a piece, and I think that you can get away with a lot more. I think you could go probably up to 300 milliliters if you wanted. Um, but I'm going to experiment just increasing incrementally. Um, the more liquid culture you add, the faster they'll colonize and the more they'll yield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an alcohol soaked uh, paper towel, um, uh, sterilize a small spot in the middle of the bag, and then try to spray evenly across the surface um, of the substrate, um, all the liquid culture, and uh, yeah, just try to hit everywhere so the mycelium doesn't have to travel far and it will colonize quickly.
one injection of 60 milliliters, one injection of 40. Um, try to use the same hole that you pierced the first time uh, in the bag. It makes it easier to find them uh, when you're trying to take, tape them up. Um, I just use regular packing tape to cover up the holes. Um, but if you want, you could do a stick-on injection port onto the plastic and um, that'll make it easier for you to um, avoid contamination if you're trying to do this in a glove box or even just um, a, a room that you spray done with Lysol. Um, I think the nice part about this uh, technique is when you in inoculate the substrate, um, everything's being transferred with um, a needle and you're injecting the liquid culture. Um, at no point is the substrate really exposed to open air. Um, so I'm going to finish up um, all of the pie tins this way and then I'll talk to you about incubation. It takes anywhere from three days to a week uh, depending on which temperature you're incubating them at. So the strain of cordyceps, also the amount and quality of liquid culture you're using. I'm going to incubate them in total darkness and keep the temperature around 75 degrees. Um, you can keep the temperature anywhere from 70 to 75. It's really important to not introduce any light while they're incubating. They should be, the mycelium should be totally white and not orange at all. And once you see your um, substrate has been fully colonized, then you can go ahead and put it in fruiting conditions. For fruiting conditions, um, temperature, I think, is the most important thing. Um, if you don't think you'd be able to maintain a temperature from 60 to 63 degrees, I wouldn't recommend even trying growing cordyceps. Um, if you, you can grow cordyceps in the 50s, um, but it could take up to two times longer uh, for the cordyceps to grow from start to finish. So instead of two months, you're looking at four months or even more. Um, I have firsthand experience with this because I tried to grow them at um, 55 degrees and it took four months. Um, and if you grow them warmer than six, or like the low 60s, then the mycelium starts growing uh, really cottony and strangely and you get really small yields. The fruit bodies stop growing um, once they're really small. Um, so temperature is super important. You need to figure out how you're going to keep the environment in the low 60s the entire time. Keeping them under lights, um, you want them to get about 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness each day. Um, this is what gets them a nice bright orange color and it tells them it's time to start fruiting. The light doesn't need to be super strong. I use um, cheap LED lights on a, um, on a timer and uh, I've seen people use like Christmas lights and other things um, so you don't have to go overboard. It's not like the, the intensity of a light you'd need for a house plant for example. So after you've incubated them and put them in fruiting conditions for a while, you should have something that looks like this. Um, the cordyceps are growing all over the surface of the substrate. Um, over by where the filter patch is, there's a little bald spot, um, just because it's too dry over there probably. Um, I was thinking of experimenting with taping off a piece of this filter patch. Um, maybe they don't need quite as much air exchange, I'm not sure though. Um, but these have been growing for one month, um, just under 30 days, and uh, so these should be continuing to lengthen and grow over the next month. That's all we have for you today. Um, if you don't follow The Mushroom Shop on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That way you get a notification whenever we put out a new video. Um, you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Mushroom Shop LLC. Feel free to message us any questions you have, and uh, we'd like to help you learn how to grow cordyceps. Um, if you want to support us, you can go on our Etsy page 
and uh, we have a few mycology supplies on there like our liquid culture lids uh, you can reuse them a bunch of times so see ya